Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just got a full step-by-step -step guide today showing you how to replace the front brake discs and pads on this 2012 Volkswagen Polo. Now it's quite a straightforward job. I'll run you through it all a step at a time. Uh, obviously we're using a two-poster ramp today. It does make the job a little bit easier. Uh, it's not too bad to do without. All you want to be doing is just jacking it up on the sill. Not on the very edge here, but on the inside. Um, just jacking it up just to get some reasonable height on it. And it's fairly uh, fairly easy to do on the floor. So I'll just show you, we've got some new discs and pads here. Uh, if you check out the links in the description below, I've put links to all the part numbers and the items and where you can get them from. Links to all the tools and any torque settings or anything like that as well. I've um, got the lock and, lock and wheel nut tool out ready for it. Um, but to start with, we'll get, it, uh, we'll get it up in the air, get the wheel off and go from there. Just one step I'm going to do, we we'll just pop the bonnet open. If you're going to be replacing the pads, you need to push the pistons back. And one thing you always want to be doing is just taking the uh, brake fluid reservoir cap off. So, now, so brake fluid reservoir, just come to the back here. It's just a little one there. If you just undo the cap, just simply leave that off for now. Just as we push the pistons back, it'll just push the fluid off. So, um, but we'll just, uh, just get it up in the air now and get the wheel off. Now, just before we get into the video, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, click on the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. Uh, we've got some other videos on this polo as well. Uh, we've got the wishbone arms. Um, there's a video for doing the cam belt on the same one. It's actually on the at Ibiza, but it's pretty much exactly the same procedure, so you can check that out as well. So now I've got it up in there, I'm just going to whip the wheel off. Now these have got these little caps on them. You do get a little tool, comes in the boot with the locking wheel nut. Um, this one hasn't actually got one in it, so I'm going to use just a little pick. You just need to see this one here, I haven't actually got one on it. But all you need to do is hook it in around the back and you can just simply pop them off. There's uh, obviously four or five of them on there. You see you've got your locking wheel nut tool under that one. And then the rest of them, you're going to want a 17 mil socket to get them off. So I'll just undo all them now and get the wheel off. Now that we've got the wheel off, first thing we're going to do, we've got a little Torx 30 screw there. It's just holding the disc in. I've actually got my Torx 30 socket on an impact driver. It's just a little bit easier. It will just whip that straight out. Uh, but if you haven't got an impact driver, you obviously need to just put like a screwdriver in the disc. Just wedge it in the sort of vented bit of the disc against the uh, caliper there to lock it uh, while you undo that. So. Um, if you really struggle with these, sometimes you might find, find them that they've all been rounded out. If they have, the best thing I find to do is just get a little punch, just punch it in right on the edge, just make an indent in it, hitting it straight in, and then knock it in sort of a, uh, knock it at an angle to slacken it off. So. Next thing we're going to need to do is remove the caliper itself. So we've just got the slider slider caps on the back here, one at the top there and one at the bottom. A little cap just on the back. Basically, you just want a flat bladed screwdriver and just poke it in just on the very back edge and you can just pop them off. So we've got them caps off and you come around just look in there and just see you've got an allen key headed slider in the back there and you're going to want seven mil allen key i've got mine in the socket there but you can use just a normal allen key if you want and um, we'll undo both of them but um just before we do that i'm just going to um just get a flat bladed screwdriver and just pry the piston back to start with sometimes just a little bit easier to do this at this stage now and um, while everything's still bolted up if you uh, you can just take them off uh, and then use a big pair of grips to squeeze it back. But I always find doing it like this, you can get a decent bit of purchase on it, which makes it a bit easier. So you've got a decent, fl decent sized flat bladed screwdriver. I'm just gonna pry in there and just work it back. And 
just say that, push the piston fully back now. Don't matter which way around it, which way around you do it. Sometimes I do it like that. Sometimes I do just take it off and uh, press it back with some grips, but give us some grips or a G clamp. Um, but we'll just undo them slider bolts now and get that off. Once you two slider bolts there, while well, you've got these out, you always want to give them a bit of a clean up and then we'll grease them in a bit and pop them back in when we're putting it back together. Now that we've got that off, we can now just pull the disc off. Again, don't look too bad round here. Sometimes it can be really rusty, but what, I, what I'd normally do is just give it a little bit of a wire brush up round there. Just put a bit of copper grease on the threads of the bolt holes as well, um, just so it's um, just so it's nicely in there for when we're putting it back together. And just sort of just copper grease round this inner face as well. Don't need to put too much on here as long as it's clean, really. Just put a little little smither on if you want. And then we can just simply pop the pads. You can see the pads here. This is like a spring clip that retains it into the outside of the caliper there. And there's another one on the inside pad that holds it into the piston. So. Now that's off. The other thing we will do as well, we'll just clean this surface here again with a wire brush. Wire brush works pretty well. You could just use a bit of emery cloth, but I always like to use a wire brush for it. So at this stage now, ready to put the brake disc on. Now your brake disc does have like, often have like a bit of a coating on to stop them rusting. So I'll just use a little bit of brake cleaner and just give that a quick wipe off. And just simply refit your brake disc. Just, just make sure that you line the uh, fixing bolt all up with a crack thread for that. So new disc on and just nip the torx bolt up there and i don't want to be mega tight these it's not the main it's not the main thing holding the disc or anything it's just simply just to hold it on while everything else is off it and the wheels are off it that's all so it's not loose um, and the main the wheel bolts do the main job of bolting it up properly so um, now i've done that we'll get the uh, get the pads on so when refitting your pads obviously this style clip is for inside the piston and that style clip is to slide onto the uh, caliper itself. So, uh, but just before I um, pop this one onto the into the piston, I'm just going to put a little bit of copper grease just around the back here. You can use copper grease or you use a ceramic paste. I mean, you don't really have much problem using copper grease, but I do like to use a ceramic paste uh, in some modern vehicles so it doesn't affect with the ABS at all. Right, so just going to fit the actual sliders now. These are a little bit grubby. I just feel a bit raised up on that inner edge there. So I'm just going to give them a quick clean up on the wire wheel and we'll get some grease on them and put them back in. Now sometimes one thing that these suffer with, if they've been done up a bit tight, they can be rounded out. So you can get these sliders pretty cheap. Um, I'll put a link in the description below to where you can get them from. Uh, just say, give them sliders a clean up there. Look nice and shiny again now. And I'm just going to put a little bit of grease on them. And I'm just going to um, locate them in, and then we'll hook the caliper back over into place. And you've just sort of got to line it up and just push these in. You want to push them in with your fingers until you feel it. So it just go past the point where it guides the start of the bolt in. And once you've got it there, you can then start winding it in just gently by hand, and just making sure the threads aren't uh, cross threading. Once you've got your sliders in there, just make sure we can just work them in and out quite nicely so they're nice and free. Now just before we sit the caliper over the um, carrier, I'm just going to put a bit of copper grease or ceramic paste just here where the pads are going to run. So. Okay, 
simply just slot the caliper over and just push in with your fingers with the um, with the sliders there until you can feel the thread part of it just locating and you can start gently winding them in just making sure you're not cross threading it So you've got them both nipped up uh, lightly just give them a and you're ready to give them a nip i just want it don't have to be mega tight just a reasonable nip really once you've done that just simply refit your caps back on Okay, so that's one side fitted now. I'm just gonna, um, I'll just skip the step where I just do the other side, but basically just repeating exactly the same process. Um, and I'll just run you through the next bit in a minute. Basically just gonna drop it down now. Just need to make sure we pump the pedal out to, to close the piston up. If you're not careful, a few people make the mistake, mistake of driving off without uh, pumping it out. And then your first few pumps of the pedal, you'll not have any brakes. So you need to make sure you pump it off before you do anything else. So. Um, but just get the other side done quick and then uh, we'll just finish it off um, but yeah up to now it's pretty much you can see most of the process is done so hope you like the video and uh, thought i'd put it together see if it helps someone having a go at theirs right, so just got the other side done just going to drop it down now we've just got a torque wrench just going to lightly nip the uh, wheel bolts up with the buzz gun and drop it down torque them up and we'll just pump the pedal out check the brake fluid we'll just run you through all that quick Took the wheels up 120 newton meters. Right, so we've now torqued both the front wheels up, just with the, with the engine off, just pump the brake paddle out until your pedal goes hard, you know, you're, uh, you know you've got your, your pads right against your disc there. Uh, next, last thing we've got to do, just check the brake fluid reservoir, just come down to that, you can just see the, uh, the max fit I'd show on the camera, but there is a line on the side with the max and that's still okay there, so just got to refit the brake fluid cap. Well, that's that, a fairly straightforward job. All I'm going to do now is just get it off the ramp, give it a little road test, make sure the brakes feel okay. Um, you probably noticed that the brake pads weren't too bad on this one. Uh, the reason I was replacing them today is that the brake discs were warped and it's getting a lot of judder while braking. So. Um, but yeah, as you can see, not too bad a job at all, really. So I thought I'd share the video with you all. Hope you liked it. And don't forget to check out any of the other videos as well. So. But thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.